Hello, TPR Nation. This is Amber Kuhn from The Perfect REA. Thank you for joining me on today's Fallout Friday, where I'll be covering the highlights and action items from this week's episodes. On Monday, Matt and Michael were talking about something they don't normally discuss on the podcast, which is investments. And they said this is also the least frequently discussed topic inside their office with their clients and prospects. But Micah said that wasn't always the case. He said they used to talk about it way too much. He ran into this problem recently with a new advisor that he brought into his team this year who realized how many problems they created by focusing so much on investments and that by doing that, he was getting so into the weeds that he was losing that connection with the client. Matt said that whatever you choose to focus on and discuss with a client, that's pushing out something else you could be discussing with them instead. The guy said that investments easily relate to playing office, where they said email is that number one example of playing office, and investments is right up there as the second one, especially as they hear from advisors who say that they run a custom portfolio for each of their clients, which Matt and Micah said are so inefficient. Micah explained that investments are a tool that's designed to do a job, and its job is to help provide an income that you can never outlive. So you need to figure out other things and plans before you get to investments and which tools will get you to your goals most reliably. Micah pointed out that he doesn't care what his client's emotional risk tolerance is. He cares about what they have in order to stay retired. So he doesn't build a portfolio based on that tolerance that won't end up meeting their retirement goals because he said, if you do, that's guaranteeing failure. He said he's solving for a bigger picture. He's not solving for emotions. Matt said that a lot of your job is finding ways to direct the client's attention to what matters. So you don't need to create some elaborate system that's gonna confuse and ultimately not help 99% of your clients. Also, doing that doesn't help your prospective clients make an educated and informed decision because people just don't understand it. The guy said with communicating with clients, you want to make sure the information and the process is streamlined and simple for them. Matt said he never talks about fixed income with a client. He talks about the war chest or income buckets and wants to make sure that he articulates that in a way that the client can understand and that translates to their goals. Micah added that he also likes to explain the negative side of things to clients and where some mistakes can happen. By doing that, he said, you're drawing your attention to things that they haven't thought about before and helping them understand that you have a plan. The guy said it's important to have stories that you can share with their clients and about what will likely happen and how that plan comes into play and that gives your clients peace of mind. Micah also shared a story about a situation that happened with a client who was transferring assets. He said he failed to communicate with them exactly what would happen and that left the client feeling scared and incredibly concerned. So no matter what, you have a job of communicating expectations on what should take place. You also need to make sure that your team understands this as well and that they're prepared to handle concerns from clients. The guy said that if you have clients or prospects who are bringing up any kind of investment concern, you need to realize that you have failed to educate your clients and you need to be the voice of reason. You always wanna come back to your client and their goals and every recommendation that you give should align with their goals. Let's get into action items. Look at your meetings and how often and for how long investments come up. If that time is more than five minutes for a routine one hour meeting, then you need to reevaluate that because you don't wanna get into the weeds. You also need to systematize your asset management and streamline as much as you possibly can. And your team should be able to answer questions as well. Lastly, text RIA to 55123 to get Belay's ebook on working with executive assistants. On Wednesday, Matt was joined by Lisa Zeveld, also known as LZ, who is the CFO at Belay, one of our strategic partners. Matt and Lisa were talking about bookkeeping and where this has been a problem for a lot of advisors who don't have good bookkeeping in place for their practice. That makes things difficult because it's hard to have good practice metrics and it makes it more difficult if you are ever going to sell your practice or get financing or bring in a partner. They said if your books are a mess, it's going to be a mess. Lisa said that we're in this culture where it's very DIY focused and people tend to go with solutions that are cheaper or they try to do things themselves. The result is that you can make something look good, but it's not the same as if you have an expert do things. This applies to business owners as well as specifically with accounting. 
that can lead towards not fully understanding reports and leaving money on the table or missing out on opportunities for tax advantages and tax savings, as well as growing your business. Lisa said finding a partner that can really help you understand this elevates your business. She also shared that having an idea of where you want to go and then implementing that into your financial statements makes a world of difference. So it's about that intentionality to stay on top of things and that this is helpful for advisors who are looking at the future of their business and how to maximize their business without feeling burdened with the day-to-day tasks that comes with staying on top of things. Matt and Lisa talked about how advisors can resort to feeling embarrassed by their books and just how much cleanup might be involved but at some point it needs to be cleaned up. Lisa said people don't want to admit where their faults are and that's especially hard for business owners because they don't wanna look like they're failing at anything. But by bringing someone in to help run the books, you're working with someone who deals with this all the time. And while in some situations it might take some time to get things back on track, that person is there to work with you and get things sorted out. Matt said people tend to forget how much you're already delegating out in your life, and so you automatically feel that you have to be the one to do everything. But there's no rule that says that you need to do your own bookkeeping. Lisa said that in a way, they become counselors for those entrepreneurs who may be in that burnout phase in their business, those who felt that they needed to be the jack of all trades. People will delegate those higher level tasks, but they feel that they should still be doing those simpler things. When in reality, those are exactly the things that you should be delegating first because your hourly rate is four times what you're gonna pay for those things to get done. She added that those who are willing to delegate and bring on an administrative team can then focus on their business instead of in their business. Lisa said that your family, your friends, and the people that you love deserve more of you than what you're showing up as if you're trying to do all those tasks by yourself. They wrapped up by saying that you need someone who you can partner with and help you understand your financials as well as catch things that you as a business owner may not necessarily be looking at. And that it's really hard to be objective about your own money. So a good bookkeeper is not only gonna help make sure that your bills are paid and your financial statements are done, but they're also there to give you suggestions. This episode's action item was to text RIA to 55123 to get Belay's ultimate guide for working with a bookkeeper. On Thursday, Jamie started off by sharing that in financial planning, advisors have done a terrible job of distinguishing what they do and who they serve. She shared a story about a difference between her and her sister-in-law, who are both financial advisors, but that what they do is totally different. Jamie said in their office, they want to be involved with their clients' lives in all financial decisions. They want to be the 411 and the 911. So that person who may not always have the answer, but who will get it for them and the person that a client goes to in a financial emergency. This is different from a lot of other advisors who are calling themselves comprehensive financial planners, but instead are very narrowly focused. Jamie then talked about how as an advisor, you'll do all these other things for other people, but you won't take the time to do steps for yourself. And that's the importance of hiring another person to help you. Someone else that you can get to learn from so that you can take all those things and implement them into your own life. Jamie said, because you work in this environment that it's easy to get prideful because you know all the information, but you can get too close and you don't then end up taking the steps to take care of yourself and the things that you're telling your clients to do. She recommends that you build this into a part of your benefits package and offer financial planning advice to all of your team members. And then the team is treated like a regular client. Jamie said for financial advisors, if you think your team doesn't understand what you do and why you're doing it, it's because you're not offering this to them. This is so powerful and life-changing because they can start to see and truly get why you do certain things. Jamie said to make sure that you're asking yourself important questions and reviewing your financial situation to make sure that you're on track. This led into the importance of looking at your succession plan and having a clear picture of what does that look like for you? She said this is the part of the financial planning that most financial advisors don't take the time to do. That people think that just when you turn 65, you should retire and that your book of business should go to someone else. But she pointed out that when you get to 65, you've spent a lifetime building relationships with your clients. So it doesn't mean that you're ready to give up on that social interaction with them. With a succession agreement, Jamie says that you need to look at buy-sell agreements and what does it look like for the practice and who inherits the book of business. She said there's a lot of complex questions that advisors don't necessarily take the time to answer. Jamie said don't take things for granted that there's always going to be time and to treat yourself with the same dignity and respect that you treat your clients. 
Let's get into action items. If you're not working with a financial advisor, go hire one no matter how much mastery you have. Build this into your compensation model for your employees. And for financial advisors, you need to have a business strategy day where part one of the day is you going through a checklist of things to cover with the partners. And part two is bringing in an attorney to go through what needs to be done. And then you can start that insurance process. That wraps up this week's recap. Thank you for joining me on today's follow-up Friday. Please share this or any of our episodes with another advisor or team member who you think might benefit from listening. And until next time, happy planning.